This is Mr. Martin. This is uh, video notes for math analysis, uh, section 11.1, .1, and uh, these mo notes may also spill into 11.2 uh, as well. But um, the last video, we uh, were just about to get to limits that fail to exist. Um, so let's uh, jump into an example. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x. So what we want to do is we want to look at the limit on either side of 0. So for x greater than 0, the value of this function, f of x, will always equal positive 1. But for x less than 0, the value of the function will always be negative 1. So if we take a look at the graph, greater than 1, we're going to have a horizontal line to the right, and less than 1, or less than 0, we're going to have a horizontal graph to the left. So this is what our graph looks like. So when we're looking at approaching 0, so here's 0, we're approaching it, we're going to approach it from the left side, and we're going to approach it from the right side. So if you notice what's going on here, as we approach it from the left and the right, there's a different value that it's approaching. So since there is a different limit depending on the side you are approaching 0, okay, so from the left or from the right, from left or right, this limit does not exist. Okay, so um, later we'll talk about um, limits from the left or limits from the right, but when you see this x approaches 0, this means we're approaching it from the left and the right at the same time. And as we approach from the left-hand side, the limit is approaching negative 1. As we approach from the right-hand side, the limit is approaching 1. Since those limits aren't the same, then we would say that this limit does not exist. Okay, so that's one of the um, ways limits fail to exist if it doesn't approach the same value from left and the right. <coughs> so let's take a look at the next example, B. So if we graph this, I'm um, just going to, I know that 1, 1 is a point on this and negative 1, 1 is a point, and then it's going to approach the axes as asymptotes. So here's half of the graph, and here's another half of the graph. And again, we want to look at the limit as we approach 0. So here's my 0. And you can see, as we approach 0 from the left, the y values, the value of the functions, keep going up. And as we approach 0 from the right, the y values are increasing as well. So since the value of the function as x approaches 0, from either side is infinity and it is not a unique real number L the limit does 
not exist. Okay, so this is an important point here. It's approaching infinity, and it is not a unique real number L. Therefore, it does not exist. Okay, so here's the second case. First case, again, if it's approaching a different number from the left and the right, the limit doesn't exist. Second case, if it does not approach a unique real number L, the limit does not exist. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this third example here. So when we're looking at this limit, we want to pick convenient values of x that approach 0. So notice I've got um, 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 5 pi, 2 over 7 pi, 2 over 9 pi. So as my denominator gets bigger, this value of x is getting smaller. So we're approaching 0. And I'm using 2 over pi because when I plug that in for x, obviously we can see that it's going to change to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2 and we can easily calculate the sine values there. So, and again since these are getting smaller we're approaching 0. So let's take a look. For 2 over pi the value of um, sine of 1 over x is going to be 1. For uh, 2 over 3 pi it's going to be negative 1. For 2 over 5 pi it's going to be 1 again. And then for 2 over 7 pi, it's going to be negative 1. And for 2 over 9 pi, it's going to be positive 1 again. And then it's going to be negative 1. So we can see it's oscillating between positive 1 and negative 1. If this is the case, then the limit as x approaches infinity, so limit does not exists. This is a third case where the limit wouldn't exist is as you approach your um, x value of the limit, it's oscillating back and forth. Um, again, third example of a case where <coughs> the limit would not exist. Okay, so here's a summary of conditions under which limits do not exist. Number one, f of x approaches a different number from the right side of c. Then it approaches from the left side of C. That was the first example we looked at, example A. Number two, f of x increases or decreases without bound as x approaches C. So it's approaching infinity. That was example B. Or third example, f of x oscillates between two fixed values as x approaches C. And that was the third example that we looked at. All right, so let's look at some properties of limits. So L, M, and K are real numbers. And we're going to start with the limit as x approaches C of f of x is L. And the limit as x approaches C of g of x is M. And these are the properties that follow from, um, from this. So the limit as x approaches K of some constant K is just going to be that number. The sum rule states um, that the limit of these two functions added together is the same as the individual limits. And then we would have the difference rule, so same as the sum rule except subtraction. And then this also works for um, products and quotients. So products is 4 and quotients is 6. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x would just be the limit of each of the functions multiplied together. We can have a constant multiplied by a function, so that would just be the constant times the limit of the function. There's our quotient rule. And then we have a power rule. So if r and s are integers where s does not equal 0, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x raised to the rs is just the limit value raised to that same exponent. So let's, uh, let's apply these properties some examples. So for example a, if we wanted to use our properties to separate this, we could do the limit as x approaches c of x cubed plus, we're going to use two properties here, actually the um, con multiply by a constant, 4 times the limit as x approaches c of x squared and then minus the limit as x approaches c of 3. 
all right? And um, the limit as x approaches c of x cubed would be c cubed. And the limit of, uh, or 4 times the limit as x approaches c of x squared would be 4c squared. And then the limit as x approaches c of 3 would simply be 3. Okay, so just applying the properties. Moving on to the next example. We got a bunch of stuff going on here as well. Again, if you want to pause the video and try and work this out on your own, feel free. So we're going to have in the numerator the limit as x approaches c of x to the fourth plus the limit as x approaches c of x squared minus the limit as x approaches c of 1 divided by the limit as x approaches c of x squared plus the limit as x approaches c of 5. Okay, and then each of these limits, this would be c to the fourth plus c squared minus 1 divided by c squared plus 5. All right, so let's take a look at um, actually calculating some limits. Now, when we in the first video, we looked at making a chart where we would get numbers that were getting closer and closer to, for example, 3. So we might use um, 2.5 on one side and 3.5 on the other side. And then we would just get numbers closer and closer until we found a limit. So one of the ways that we can calculate a limit is with direct substitution. Okay, if there's no reason why we can't plug it in, and you'll see some examples where we can't just plug it in to get it, then basically we just um, do direct substitution. So we can use our properties to separate this out. We don't really need to. So the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared times the quantity of 2 minus x would just be 2 squared times 2 minus 3, sorry, that would be 3 squared, which would be 9 times negative 1 or negative 9. Okay, and if we made our chart, we would see that the values on each side would start to approach negative 9. So next example, again, if you want to pause it and work it out, so this is going to be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4 divided by 2 plus 2, which gives us 4 plus 4 plus 4 divided by 4, which is 3. So the limit of this function as x approaches 2 is going to be 3. And in these cases, the value of the function at the value, these values of c would also be negative 9 and 3. So other limit techniques, when plugging in fails because it gives you division by 0, you have to convert the fraction into some expression where plugging in does work. So here are six different techniques that we'll look at. And I think if you want to um, read through these and then um, We'll work on those examples in, an, in another video because um, I'm going to end this video here. So um, we've got foiling, factoring, least common denominator, canceling, simplification, conjugate multiplication. So we have a lot of techniques here um, that you have to consider uh, if uh, direct substitution isn't going to work for you. So if you have any questions, make sure you uh, write those down and ask them. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.